today about the limitations in contracting rules and the um, some tips for success when you're working on federal projects. Um, the new SBA rules, which were um, revised in 2016, um, exclude from the limitation on subcontracting calculation any work that you as the prime subcontracts to another small business, which according to the new rules, that small business has to be what we call a similarly situated entity. Work done by the similarly, similarly situated entities uh, obviously would not count against the prime contractor's obligation under the limitations and subcontracting rule. It actually helps the um, prime meet the obligations. Um, each NAICS code carries, carries its own subcontracting requirement and you might want to be aware that not all NAICS codes are 5149, meaning that the prime has to do 51 and the subcontractor or team and partner has to do 49. For example, I believe the construction NAICS code, the 236, and I believe the 237 series carries a 15 or 15 percent obligation for the prime and 85 percent for the uh, subcontractors or team and partner. So in the example of a NAICS code with a 5149, um, the 51% could include both the prime and the subcontractor's contribution to um, the small business work, so long as the team and partner or the subcontractor is a similarly situated uh, small business. Um, mixed contracts, um, one point uh, you might want to take a look at here is um, where procurement combines both supplies and services, the limitations on subcontracting apply only to the subcontracts that correspond to the principal purpose of the prime contract. Um, so there are some situations where you have a mixed bag. Um, the courts will primarily look at um, quantifying or characterizing the contract um, based upon the principal purpose. For example, if you have a substantial amount of the subcontractor that services, then it will be considered a service type prime contract. Before looking into the obligations and some of the tips for success, um, it's important to understand the underlying principles and rules of what is considered a similarly situated small business. Um, general definition, a similarly situated entity is a small business subcontractor that is a participant of the same small business program that the prime contractor is certified as a certified participant and which qualifies the prime contractor to receive the award. Um, in a nutshell, what that means is first, courts will look at if it's a small business set aside and the prime obviously is a small business, then the subcontractor or team and partner would only also have to be a small business. Um, likewise, if it's a SBA 8A set aside and the prime is an 8A company, then for to qualify as a similarly situated uh, small business, the team and partner would also have to be an 8A company. Um, same application would go for a hub zone, service disabled vet, woman zone, et cetera. The second part that um, you want to be careful of, and most people miss this, is that to also be a similarly situated small business, the subcontractor or team and partner must also meet the size standard for the next code, which um, the prime assigns the subcontract work. And note that the standard is not the same NAICS code as the prime contract, but it's more focused on the type of work that the prime assigns to the subcontractor. So 
uh, companies may want to pay uh, special attention to that. Let's look at some tips for success when you're uh, complying with the limitation and subcontracting rule. Um, be aware that the compliance with limitations and subcontracting rule is a matter of contract performance. Um, for example, if you're filing a size protest, and this is the only allegation that you have that um, prime contractor X is not performing the um, its fair share, um, then your size protest may be dismissed because um, obviously um, the SBA and OHA are, are not into the business of, of deciding issues of contract performance. Um, Case in point, your size appeal of assessment and training solution consulting corporation, 2012 case. Um, but you can also see size appeal of ProSouth Construction Services, which is a 2017 case. Also take a look at 13 CFR 125.6E, um, where it talks a little bit more about um, issues and size protests and um, it being a, an issue of contract performance. Second point is you want to make sure that your team and partner or subcontractors is also small at the time you, if you're the prime, certify that you're small. If you looked at the um, second part of whether they are a, whether the team and partner or subcontractor is a similarly situated small business, um, it also says that that company has to be small regardless of in respect to the um, primes assigned subcontracting work. Well, if there's an allegation that the uh, team and partner is not similarly situated and the protester, for example, makes an allegation that the team and partner is also not small, then the question is, at what point in time does the SBA or the court look at uh, the, the size standard. Um, the rules primarily focus on the prime, but since this similarly situated small business is virtually about a couple of years old now, then I would assume um, without seeing any other um, decisions on that matter that the subcontractor or team and partner is also gonna be held to the standard of, of being small at the time the uh, proposal um, was submitted or certified that they're also small. So you might want to pay attention to that. Third, similar situated contractors must still perform a significant part of the work. Um, so not only are they focusing on the prime, but since the prime is also getting the benefit of the work done by a similarly situated uh, small entity, um, a focus is also going to be on the subcontractor. The subs cannot pass on work to large businesses. Um, prime contractors should consider making their team and partners and subcontractors certify to this point each time an invoice is submitted. Now, there's no case law to support this. However, um, the law enforcement agencies, when you're looking at uh, false claims and pass-throughs, et cetera, um, may very well um, look at a uh, prime contractor um, in, in light of figuring out what have they done to mitigate circumstances to protect um, its status when you have a subcontractor who's passing on work to a uh, large business in violation of the rules. So you might want to pay attention um, to making sure that your team and partners and subs are also compliant with the regulations. Fourth, you want to uh, know that the work that is not performed by the employees of the prime contractor or employees of the first tier, similarly situated subcontractors, will count as subcontracts performed by non-similarly situated concerns. What does that mean? Um, again, if the work is not being done by uh, either the similarly situated or the prime, it's done by another entity, then um, it's gonna count um, against the limitations and subcontracting rule for the prime. Um, also, when, you, when the prime is, is considering whether they're complying with the limitations and subcontracting rule, they also wanna make sure that they're not just supervising the subcontractor. 
um, that by itself could violate the ostensible subcontractor rule because in addition to the limitations and subcontractor rule, the prime still also has to perform the primary and vital parts of the contract. So it's a two-part analysis that you want to make sure that you're not just supervising, but that you're also um, performing as a prime um, your fair share of the work. In other words, um, you, you don't want to pass on everything to the similarly situated small business, even though the general rule is, is that the prime gets credit for it. So as you can see, the prime and the subcontractor are joined by the HIP under the new SBA guidelines. So in order not to get caught up in um, non-performance issues or in a lot of cases now you have um, violations or criminal violations for pass-throughs, violation of limitation and subcontracting rules. So um, as gun general contractors out there, you might wanna pay attention to these five tips. Um, if you have any additional questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to us, um, 1-866-601-5518. Again, this is Theodore Watson from Watson & Associates.